good morning everybody it's a beautiful day here in uh, South Carolina I'm thankful it's um, it's gonna be a great day and uh, that was a word on my heart this morning I was uh, having a conversation with a brother this morning and uh, you know only one thing is needful and that is to sit at the feet of Jesus and let him persuade our heart of our true identity in Christ that is the bottom line that is the safe place knowing who you are in Christ amen and um, I was sharing that you know so many people today are trying to see where we are in end times in the book of Revelation and all that and you know I see that as a big distraction because we can spend all of our time trying to figure out where we are when things are going to happen but you know what you can know you could know even though jesus said no man hey pat no man knows the hour okay no man knows when the son of man is coming but let me just say this hypothetically even if you could figure it all out to the day so what 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 difference does it make? You know, the whole thing is we can be so distracted with what's going on in the world and focusing on trying to figure out what's what, when it's going to happen. But the, the thing that's important is that we stay in our identity, that we know who we are so that, good morning, Pat so that we will be able to stand in the evil day. Listen, if we spend all of our time trying to figure out when everything is going to happen, you are not focusing on the one thing that's important, and that's keeping yourself in the love of God. Amen? Because you know what? It doesn't make any difference to me. What what's happening where we are in the timeline the whole nine yards the whole thing I'm I am concentrating on is keeping myself in the love of God in my identity of who I am my relationship to my Heavenly Father and that he cares for me and he's gonna take care of me and then say la vie whatever happens happens I will be ready in that day you know um, I was thinking this morning you know the scripture says in first uh, Corinthians 10 13 that there's no temptation taken you but is common to all men okay there's nothing new in the book and you know the scripture says in Hebrews 4.15 that Jesus was tempted in all points like us, but without sin. And you know, a lot of people think that Jesus was tempted with every imaginable evil thing that could be um, thought of. But that's not what it's talking about. You know, the scripture in um, 1 John 2.15 it says, love not the world, nor the things in the world. In other words, don't love this world system. This world system is this world's belief system. That you are what you do. And he goes on to say, he says, um, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. You know, all temptations come in those three categories. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And you know where that first originated? Genesis 3. You know, I'll tell you, I was looking at it this morning, 
And you know, before Eve ever ate that fruit, she was already deceived. Because when she was first tempted by Satan, she said, you know, the Lord said that this is not good to eat, okay? So she was looking at it like, this is not good, okay? But after listening to the devil, it says, when the woman saw the tree, now she's looking at it after the lie comes. She saw the tree was good for food. Wait a minute. She just said that the Lord said it wasn't. Her opinion has changed. She's already bought the lie. Now it's going to seal the deal when she eats it. The tree was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. You know that word wise there means intellectual, successful. There you've got the three temptations. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes, it was good. She it was good. She saw that the 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 it was pleasant to the eyes and the pride of life. And you know, when it says Jesus was tempted in all points like us, he was tempted in those three categories. He was tempted when he was hungry to produce food uh, without being unctioned to do it by the Father. He was shown all the kingdoms of the world and said, look, you can have all this glory, you know, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And yet he resisted unto death. You know, is all I can say is we need to know who we are. We need to know, that is critical. And you can, you can have everything that this world has to offer, but if you don't know who you are, you won't be able to stand in the evil day. And, and that evil day is the day that you will be tempted to toil and labor to prove who you are. And you know what? It'll be far from you. It will be far from you if you stay in your identity. Amen. It says that you may be able to withstand, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And those, those temptations are going to come to us to prove who we are, to try and prove through what we do. And you know, Jesus never lifted a finger to prove anything. In the power of the word, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. He walked in the power of that word, and he submitted himself to the Father, and trusted in the Father to provide for him. And even on the cross, when they said, if you be the Son of God, come down from there. In other words, prove it. You know? Oh boy, prove it. That's pride. You know? Satan say that to most human beings. Prove who you are. They're going to do something. But not, not Jesus. Because he knew he didn't have to prove anything. He had the approval of his Heavenly Father. And he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And you know what? The Father was faithful. And he raised him up. He raised him up from the dead and seated him far above every name and every principality and every name that was named. He seated him at the right hand. And you know, when he raised Christ up from the dead, he raised us up with him and caused us to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is our identity. That is who I am. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven as I walk this earthly sod. And you know what? I have to continue 
to listen to God's good view and opinion of me, then I, my heart will be established in grace and in the Word of God so that I won't be removed from my identity in Christ because the whole world is going the opposite direction. It's all about how I look, what I have, what I possess, how smart I am. And you know, it is a treadmill that you never get off of. You never come to rest. It's just like, oh, you know, this weekend, one of the speakers at our conference was a, a young lady that for 34 years was on the treadmill of works. And she said it almost killed her until the Lord gave her the revelation of grace that she is good, that she is accepted in the beloved. And it's just what a difference. It's night and day. And so I encourage you today to listen to a word that is going to encourage your heart to reveal your true self, who you really are, because who you are is good, who God made you to be is good, and we are accepted, we are all accepted, there's not one person on this planet that has not been accepted by God. The only difference between those that are enjoying their salvation and those that are not is some of us have awoken we've awakened to, to righteousness and we don't believe the lie anymore awake to righteousness and sin not doesn't mean behave yourself and stop doing bad no it means awake to your true identity and don't fall for the lie anymore Amen. Once you know who you are, you won't be deceived. And you can live a life of joy and peace in the Holy Spirit, just knowing who you are. Hey, Kevin. God bless you, my beloved. Um, love you. Give my love to Ed. Um, we're so blessed. And I'm so thankful. And I'm expecting a good word this morning. Well, God bless you all and have a wonderful day.